part of the shot that rang around the world? Well, this is the voice that's heard in 80 countries. Amen? Amen. And moving to more. At this time, I'd like to present our pastor. Go ahead. Let us give God some praise. church the other day and it says we still sing hymns. You know sometimes that's how it gets back in your soul. When stuff means something. It's exciting that we're moving on. You know time don't reverse. And only one time it stood still. But it always is moving forward. But see, that's only to us. Because God looks at time because he is time. And he that knows the beginning and he knows the end. Because he's above time. So as we get ready to embark on a newness. Some of us is going through life changes. Some of us is going to experience new victories and new ways. Some of us is just going to say, I just hope next year is not like last year. Well, I can assure you that's the truth. That 2020 won't be like 2019. Because things will change. Whether you want it to or not. But when God's going to get involved, then we must be ready and prepared to understand that God is up to something. When we was in Sunday school today, we was talking about God has a greater plan. Well, Miss Paul, as we embark on what God has for us, you can already see he got a greater plan. Because less than 30 some days ago, you wasn't here. You were somewhere else. But he done moved you to something different. He done moved you to something that is going to make you be able to do things in a different way. 
The biggest thing that's going to hinder us, the biggest thing that's going to stop us, is if we lock ourselves in to our own narrow vision. How many of you know God is so much bigger than your vision? bad. Don't feel bad. If you locked into your own stuff. Because you're only doing what's natural. And even when God started his infamous wisdom with the church, it had a fight to not get locked into a narrow vision. Today, the church itself in a whole is battling and struggling with this narrow vision mentality. Many of us are so wrapped up in the preserving our own legacies, our own things that we have accomplished or want to do, that we seem to focus only in a tongue and not see the bigness of what God wants done. And you got to admit to yourself that it's hard not to look at me. Not me, 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 you. <laughs> because when we look at our own selves, some of us even wonder if that eternalness is still true within ourselves. Some of us are still wondering, are we still say, are we still part of God because of our past and what we done done. But I'm here to assure you that God don't lose nothing. Because whatever is his is his. And when we are willing to understand that we are his, then he got to start working on the way we look at things. We have to start looking at things in a whole different light. In the book of Acts, God is getting ready to take the church out of a narrow vision of itself. In Acts chapter 11, God is getting ready to walk the church somewhere never thought it would walk to. I know I'm going to talk at home to somebody, even if I only talk to myself. Because uh, you see, see, many of us are still stunned that we here. And the newness and the reality of being here haven't set in yet. Because it, it, it blew our vision away of what we thought it should be. What we, we thought was going to happen. But in Acts chapter 11, God is getting ready to do something. And it bothered and shook the church. And it made it look at itself in a whole different way. But Jesus had already prophesied that this would happen. But they didn't believe what he had said. Do it sound familiar? I, I hope I'm talking to somebody. I mean, I mean, why don't you just be honest with yourself? Ain't no use of sitting here lying. You didn't believe it. Because even if your misbelief was due to misunderstanding, because you didn't know what he really meant until it came forth. But you can't say that he didn't say it. You just didn't understand it. That's why it's good to live by Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Lean not on your I don't understand. See, we don't we don't believe these things because our understanding starts to narrow our vision of what it's supposed to. So he says to us in verse chapter eleven, verse one. Now the apostles and brethren who in Judah heard that the Gentiles who had also received the word of God. And when Peter came to Jerusalem, that's the church, those of circumcised, circumcision contend with him, saying, you went to the, into the uncircumcised 
and you ate with them. Now turn to Philippians and you know the scripture and I just hope you can live the scripture. Turn to Philippians 4 verse 13 where it tells us some simple things that we love to quote and we love to say it but I think we have a hard time trying to live it because then all of a sudden you better start saying this more and more often in your own life. It says in Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Oh, we say it. But do we really deep down believe it when the rubber hit the road? We say it. But do you really internalize it when God done shifted and changed and opened up your eyes to something that you never thought would happen? See, do you say it and believe it when God says, now I'm about to manifest a promise that I have given unto you and you didn't come the way you thought it was going to come? Do you say, I can do all things through Christ? Who strengthens me? Well, let me give you some history. Then we can walk on and get some truth. See, growth is a part of God's holy plan. And the book of Acts is a good place to start in the Bible if you want to see God's growth for something. See, God don't want us to stay still. God wants us to grow. God wants to expand and and he's searching and he's lengthening us. But many of us are satisfied with our growth. And we refuse to want to grow so much more because we think that we have narrowed God down to our own narrow vision. See, we don't want God to take us out of our own comfort zone. We don't want God to move us from something that he said, I have a greater plan for you. You want to say, God, this is about as good as it's going to get. And if the church said that, we'd be in trouble. Guess what? We in trouble. Because the church is starting to say that now. It's good as it's going to get. We don't have to grow no more. We don't have to do nothing no more. All we got to do is just come in and act like we're going through the motion and God is satisfied with what we up to. Growth means doing something. Growth is an action word. Growth don't mean just going there and just participate. Growth means you got to be actively doing something in your life. Well, let's look at the church real quick. Let's start with the book of Acts chapter 1. The church grew because it was a praying church. When the day of Pentecost hit, the church was praying and they ushered in prayer. Unfortunately, the church don't do that no more because the church then came with this attitude now. I don't need to go to church to pray. Well, I got news for you. A no praying church is a no growing church. A church that can't come together and be with one another and pray with one another is not a growing church. I'm praying for you on Facebook ain't going to get it. I need to see you face to face. But see, that's why the church ain't growing. Because this, what started it in the book of Acts is now diluted today. The church grew in chapter 2 when it started to get spiritual power. And in that spiritual power, it enacted love. But now the church has a problem with spiritual power. We move into witchcraft and Buddhism and still dealing with Zodiac and many other things that have polluted our spiritual power from God. And then what makes the spiritual power even weak is we don't love one another like we supposed to. 
And the first church grew out of the spiritual power because not only did they pray, they gained spiritual power and they started to learn to love yes. one another. Yes. See, that's what was the ingredients to make things grow. Mm -hmm. And many of us then got to the point that we are satisfied mm -hmm. with the anointing on our lives. We are satisfied with the so-called love that we demonstrated. We are satisfied with our prayer life. And then you wonder why you not growing. Or have you learned to fake that too? See, no spiritual power is no growth. No Holy Spirit is no growth. The Holy Spirit brings forth the spiritual power. And no love in the church is going to mean that the presence of God is not in the church. And the reason why believers is running from the church is because we believe it. And what gets me and astounds me is this. How can you say you're the believer and they done ran you out of the church that way you supposed to get the spiritual power and demonstrate the love and do what God wants oh, somebody on the set. Imitation and artificial people. It's starting to run the church and the real folk is at home. Healing came in Acts chapter 3. When we start to exercise, y'all hear me? Yes. When we start to exercise our spiritual gifts. Yes. Don't you know that everybody that's a child of God got a spiritual gift at least one? Yes. But don't you know that gift cannot work if it's not in the house of God yes. where it was designed? Did you hear me? It wasn't designed out there on Grove and 21st. It was designed to be where God placed it in the house of God and we running around wondering what's wrong. I'm just walking through the Bible with you. See, the church had to go through these things in order for it to grow. And then the next thing that is killing us today and where the church is having a problem with, the church had to get in chapter 4 beyond the fear of man. Don't you know fear stifles growth? Don't you know when God tasks you to do something and you don't do it because you're scared and you're fearful of what somebody else can do? Evidently you need to quote the scripture. If God is for you, What can man Nothing. do to me? Nothing. That's why I stand on Joshua when he says no man can stand against you. Because if you're doing what I done told you to do, nobody, nothing, no person can stop what God has went on y'all to shout. See, fear stops you from shouting. Why can't you shout? Because you know that fear and stifle your growth and growth is no longer there and you can't shout because you don't let somebody steal your job. Sitting around worried about what folk think. But see, if you was in the church, you wouldn't have no problem. But see, because in the church, Fear starts to diminish. Because when you will burn your brothers and sisters, you start to get some power yes. in your life. And you ready to go do something. Yes. 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 See, the civil rights was in the church. Because if they wasn't in the church, then they wouldn't have power to stand up against what man was going to try to do to them. And in the church, they kept coming together. They kept praying together. They kept getting spiritual power. They kept loving one another. They kept on moving. And then when they went out in the street, they knew they were doing the will of God. Fear stifles our growth. It strangles us and we think we breathe it. 
when God say pray in the schools and we sitting around going all day and I can't lose my job. Don't you know the same job that gave you the job is the same one to protect your job. Then in Acts chapter 5, when, when the church get to act in a fool come on, come on. and think they lying to the preacher, mm. oh, Jesus. God had to show them. Yeah, I wish he would do it some more. Actually, let me help you out with this one. I love this one. Actually, he's doing it, but you don't see it. See, when Ananias and Sophia lied to the church, God had to show spiritual discipline and took them out. See, what we think that God ain't still doing the same thing. But see, God ain't forgot what he done done. And in order to make the church grow, God got to bring discipline in people's lives so that they will be able to obey and do what God needs them to do. Because I don't know about you, but I got a God of order. And order is what God done established. That's why I don't mind telling them what does the Bible say. Because I know order is in the Bible. Now, I don't want to know what you done said. I want to know what the Word done said. And then this is what I love. When you tell me what the Word said, I ain't got to say nothing else. Because it came out of your mouth. Now, it's up to you to obey God. So in Acts chapter 6, God moved the church on to grow and deal with inner turmoil. When the widows were feeling neglected. Come on, come on. Then he went on in chapter 7 and the Holy Spirit started to use other folk. Mm-hmm. Besides the preachers. Mm-hmm. He started to let deacons come into the work. Uh-huh. And anointed them to do some work. Uh-huh. And through the deacons like Stevens and Phillips, the church started to grow. Uh-huh. Then in Acts chapter 8, he would say that this is where we don't like. The church went under persecution. Don't you know the more persecuted the church get, the more it grows right. when true Christian yeah. is demonstrating what their church is supposed to go through. Right. As they were becoming persecuted, yeah. other folks saw their witness and testimony yeah. and it started to save other folks because yeah. the reason why they was going through it yeah. was not because they liked it. They declared the name of Jesus yeah. and that name started to become a name that was above all names yeah. and all all of a sudden, through persecution, every knee was starting to bow you, and proclaiming his goodness yeah, yeah. and proclaiming who he is. Yes, Lord. Then the church went on to Samarians and broke generational curses. Come on, come on. Y'all know the Samarians in the Bible. Matter of fact, Jesus went to one of them when the woman came to the well and he said, guess what, honey? You ain't going to have to go up no mountain no more. Because one day you're going to worship in spirit and in truth. Because one day the Holy Spirit is going to come and descend. And all of these generational curses that's been on your home ain't going to be there no more. You don't have to be an alcoholic because my daddy was an alcoholic. You don't have to worry about being broke because my family was broke. Because whatever the baggage was back then, when you accept me, I done broke the baggage that was helping you and holding you back. Now you can sit there and make up excuses or you can believe what was said in the Bible. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Then God goes on and converts Saul. Oh, I love this one too. And here's where I don't understand something. Y'all make me small. God converts small Saul, who was the enemy of the church, mm-hmm. who caused the church to grow. Yeah. And God converts the man that had the church grow. Mm-hmm. And he turned him around. Mm-hmm. And he take him and make him upside down. Mm-hmm. And see, what God brought with Saul is what God expects us to do. God said, if I can forgive Saul, then why can't you forgive Saul? And then when we learn to forgive, then we learn to grow. Because what used to be 
ain't no more. So if Saul used to be out there cussing you out, then all of a sudden he became your enemy. And he done walked down the aisle and he get converted. Don't you sit there and get mad at God because God done saved the soul. You need to rejoice and say he's no longer my enemy. Good luck with God. Well, we don't have that attitude no more. When they come down the aisle and get saved, what it was to please. You know that state. They don't even, you know they ain't telling the truth. And then what makes it worse is they might have got saved but not transformed yet. Yeah, right. And we'll sit there and say, see? Then one day you walk into the church and he up there preaching. The Holy Ghost truth. The Holy Ghost truth. Now watch this. Then God going to bring him back to the church. Not out on 21st and Grove. To the church. And he going to lay hands on him. And God is going to touch him. Through the church. Of spiritual power. Of love. Of prayer. Of testimony. Of forgiveness. I'm talking about the church. He going to lay hands with a real church. And he going to send him out to do the work that he was meant to do. I'm talking about a real church. See, you can't lay hands in the club. You got to bring them to the holy ground. You can't lay hands in your house. You got to bring them to the holy ground. You can't. See, it's artificial when it's not done in decent and in order of what God done said. All this new stuff we done came up with. Then he said, Hi, come on. Yes, the problem with the church was, in his narrow-mindedness, the Jews were the chosen people. Come on, come on. But then all of a sudden, instead of letting God grow them, I don't know I'm going to go in somebody's house. <laughs> instead, of, instead of letting God Grow them. Or oh, I wish my finance committee was here to lead this. Y'all tell them when I get through. Instead of letting God grow them, what they did was bring their old traditions and their old beliefs and their old Judaic ways and they injected it into the church and demanded that's the way the church is supposed to be. But God was out to show us you had a narrow vision of who I am because you just can't bring your Baptist way. You can't just bring your Negroid way. You can't just bring the way you want to bring. I don't care what they did in 1930. I don't care what they did in 1812. It's a new day. And the Holy Spirit is out to do a new thing. You can talk about all the stuff that Grandma used to do. Well, I'm here to tell you, you ain't Grandma. Grandma did it back then. God is trying to do something new in you. See, we hold on to all that stuff. I used to be like that. I'm so glad I didn't grow up in the church. Because he had to take some fool like me off of 21st and Grove and say, go on in there. Because I didn't know nothing about nothing. And by not knowing nothing, you can be open to grow and don't have a narrow vision. One of the biggest fights today is we keep trying to make it be the same. I got news for you that God, by the time he got the church to chapter 11, he said, no longer can just you hang out with the Jews. I'm going to bring folk in that ain't like you. I'm going to bring folk in that don't understand you. But you turn around telling me you don't understand them. Have you ever thought they didn't understand you? They're the same thing you don't understand. It's the same thing they don't understand. But God said, I've got one common bond. My name is Jesus. And Jesus alone. And through that, there's going to be some healing in this house. 
See, I don't know about you, but we got to learn to get focused in 2020. Yes. God done opened the world up to 2020. Yes. It no longer do you got to be world on your little 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 block. I remember we you know we love to say back then we knew everybody on our street. Mm -hmm. Well, watch this. You don't even know your next door neighbor now. Because you don't want to know your next door neighbor now. He might be some fool. See, we got to understand that God done opened his up and saying to us, no longer can you act the same way. Now watch what I'm about to say. And I hope this is good for you too. See, we bring our thoughts and all that stuff with us. Don't you know God is trying to erase that and get rid of that and let that stuff be what it used to be? Don't you know that God don't want you to serve more than one master? And the only master God wants you to serve is God himself. But many of us is serving more than one master. That's why we got a whole bunch of problems letting go of a whole bunch of stuff. And you keep wondering what's wrong with you. Why can't I live a Holy Ghost filled life? It ain't that I can't live it. I just got to get rid of some stuff. And God is trying to clean me out. You remember when you us dated folk? Remember when we used to go to the circus <laughs> and you would see the lion tamer take the and wonder. Have you ever wondered why he have a chair with the lion? Yeah. And we, well, I had to go find out why he has a chair. And the thing about the chair is, see, the lion tamer would stick the chair up in the lion's face with the four legs. The lion is trying to be focused on the four legs, trying to bring them together to be one leg. But while they're working on trying to focus, they are paralyzed to do everything else. And the lion tamer can make the lion do what he wants it to do because the lion is too busy trying to focus on what the chair is up to. And the lion tamer is able to make the lion do what it does because it didn't know what else to do because it done lost its focus on the lion tamer and its focus on the chair. Satan got that chair sitting in your face and you trying to focus on that chair instead of watching what the tamer is trying to to get you to do. God is saying, you need to quit looking at the chair and start looking at me so that I can expand. The way you do things. So when we get focused, our vision, we can start to grow in our lives. We can start to focus on God's will. See, many of us is so worried about being secure. We so worried about our money, our careers, our pleasures, and our carnality. Instead of focusing on the word of God, which is going to destroy the things that you stay focused on. Let me give you a good example of where to start getting focused. My Bible says the first thing you need to do not the second or the tenth. It says, first ye seek the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness with the promises that they will provide abundance in your life. And when we start to focus on those things, then we don't get paralyzed on the things of the world like our job, our career. Don't you know God takes pleasure in taking care of his people? God get the light in taking care of his people. God loves showing up to the crazy folk that don't want to they want to do what he don't you know that if you don't know God knows and God loves showing up. See, the early church, they took the gospel to the nations. But now, they feel in chapter 11, when Peter came home 
thinking he done done a good deed. The church was sitting there going, how can you take the gospel to the people that don't even know Jesus? How can you take the gospel to people that don't even look like us? How can you take the gospel to people that don't even sound like us? How can you take the gospel to people that don't even dress like us? How can you take the gospel to people that don't even eat like us? How can you take the gospel to people that don't even think like us? And the problem with that is, Peter turned to them and said, I took it because God told me to take it. And I can't help what God does in their life. See, Peter actually calls them to do more. That's why we need to get rid of some of our old prejudice, some of our old feuds, yes, yes. some of our old division. Yes. Miss Paul, we, I, I pray we don't come into this new place. Mm -hmm. right. It look old, but it's a new place. Yes. It don't feel and look like modern man, but it's of God. Yeah. It may not even feel and look like the stuff that the kids want today, but this is what God said that he want for you. God said, I got a greater plan. So you can't come in here the same way you used to be. What you did on 17th and 11 on the hydraulic, you leave it on 17th and hydraulic. Because where you going to do it 2211 South Block, you're going to have to let me clean you out. You're going to have to let me transform your thinking. You're going to have to let me move in a way that I need you to move. You can't act the same way you used to act. And I don't care how old you are. I don't care who you think you are. I don't care how great you are. Don't put a man the same way you were over there. God wants to build new relationships. God says, I want you, I want you to put some distance between your past. I'm going to give you a new future. I don't want you to bring all that stuff that you used to have. Because what it did was hold you up. I want you to be able to move in the freeness of who I am. You may not understand what I'm up to, but I got a greater plan. Your plan ain't my plan. My plan is your plan. And when you have to enjoy it. See, when we get rid of our old prejudice, our old misunderstanding, and our old hostilities. Then we realize we are new creature. And all conflict don't mix. Let me say that one more time. Say it again. I'm going to try it again. You are new creature. Old conflict don't mix. New blessings. Not old bitterness. New holiness. Not old hostilities. Mm. New heights. Yes. Not old hatred. Mm. New worship. Yes. New work and new ways. Yes. But not the old welfare things that we used to rely on. Mm. New faith. Yes. Not old views. See, the power of old don't mix with prejudice. The power and the new spirituality of God and the new redemption and racism. God is out to destroy. God said when I gave you salvation, I'm willing to eliminate sexism. I don't know what you used to think, but I'm ready to rise up because he said in Job and he said in Acts, I am going out on my spirit on sons and daughters. Sexism is no longer valid because what I choose to use is what I choose to use. And all you got to do is get rid of the old way in which you used to think. Because I'm going to do a new thing. I'm going to lift up new height. And I'm going to show you a new anointing. And watch this. When I give you a new anointing, I expect you to get rid of old anger. Yes. 
Amen. When I give you a new testimony, I want you to get rid of old thinking. See, we need to get rid of some words in our life. And one word that has stifled us. It is a little old four-letter word. But it's so powerful that it really freezes us. And you hear it all the time. But there's an antidote to the poison you continue to try to drink. God says that you need to get rid of the word can't. See, many of us know how to use can't like a loaded weapon. We know how to inject that poison into God's people. When God wants to do something out of the miraculous, the first words out of our mouth is, we can't do that. When God wants to open up the heavens and the earth, we'll say, we can't do that. When God tells us that we can become stronger and better, we say, no, we can't. When God said, I so love the world that I gave my only son and anyone that believe in him shall not perish. If you have ever life, we say, no, he can't. When the Holy Spirit came and said, I have come to give life and life more abundantly. I have come to give power and power within you. We say, oh, no, he can't. When God desires for us to live off the promises of his word, common sense, human reasoning, and logic say, oh, no, he can't. But God's word is God's word that above all those words. God says, Cain is your poison, but I got an antidote. God says, why don't you quit fighting one another? Why don't you quit arguing with one another? Why don't you know that I done made you the head and not the tail to this world and quit letting them tell you what you can't do? God desires that you move on up and be significant because God says my grace is sufficient for all of us and it is strengthened in perfect weakness and in that weakness the word can't can't be there because when you are weak he is strong so we need to work on can't and when you don't live in a can't world the Bible says resist the devil and it shall flee from you. But we say no. It can't. So we go play with the devil. And he steady leads us away from God. But if you learn to say can't. God says. If you learn to put the word can't away. God says I'll give you the pleasure of the kingdom. And I'll start to let you live the way you need to live. See, you got to learn to let God unlock your potential. And then you will start to have a maximum growth in your life. When we get rid of narrow vision, the word can't won't be there. When we start achieving what God wants us to achieve, the word can't won't be there. See, if you learn to dig a hole and start putting all that junk and bury it where it belongs, then all of a sudden, the old you done died and the new you done came. And we need to quit saying can't because God said, quit saying can't and say this, I can't do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I don't care what the situation is. I don't care what I done been through. I can do all things through Christ who done strengthened me. So what? I made a mistake. I'm going to get back up and I'm going to say I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I don't care if it's going to cost a million dollars to do what God said. I can still get up and say I can do all things that Christ who strengthens me. I don't care if I said go back to school. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I don't care if he says go out and preach 
to the dead and preach to the people that don't want to get up and follow me. I can do all things to work who strengthens me. I don't care if I got to stand all by myself. I can do all things to work who strengthens me. I don't care what you have said. So I can become all that you want me 
we to be. Yeah. When we get ready to go into 2020, let us be what we supposed to be. Let all that stuff. See, one of the reasons God moved you, he took you out of your comfort zone. He took you out of a building that you helped build. Yeah. And then he said, I'm going to put you somewhere where you got to start all yeah. over. Because no longer do you have control. Yeah. I got control. Yeah. And I am the Lord thy God. Who went to the cross and now dwells in you. And all you got to do is put away all your prejudice. Put away all your old ways of thinking and put away all of this stuff that is holding you down. Can you fly with no luggage on the plane? <laughs> Leave the luggage on the ground. Let me give you the biblical example. Jesus said, I want you to go out and don't take nothing with you. Because I shall supply all your needs according to my riches and glory. And then he was even bold enough to tell them if they don't want to hear it, dust your feet off and walk away. Because you don't have to take nothing with you. Because I will supply all your needs. And they walked out and said, I can do all things. makes me so excited about 2020 and a beyond. If he doesn't show me like he did with David. He said to David you know, how many of you know it took David 30 some years to become the king? Right, he got anointed at 13 but it, it took 30 years before he got the job. Yeah. See, you may be having something that you wait on but God is getting you prepared for yeah. it. But he told David, he said, go and do what I commanded you to do. David was supposed to build and take Israel and to take the Ark of the Covenant and bring it to Jerusalem. Make Jerusalem a holy city. When David did what he was supposed to do, sometimes you need to understand that's all you were supposed to do. When they came to building the temple, God told David, you can't build the temple. That's not your job. You done done everything I done told you to do. I know we haven't done near what God done told you to do. Let me, this is like I said, I won't preach to you till 2020, but let me tell you 2019, my job is to build a campus on this four acres of land and give God a holy place because God to reclaim what he has said and he said this part not St. James not St. John not New Hope not Lost Hope not this not that he said prayer this part I have called you to do what I'm calling you to do and all I need you to say is I can do all things. Now, I don't know who's going to be around to help see. I don't know who's just doing lip service. I'm not worried about that. Because all I'm going to do is stick the chair up and see what you focus on. Because God is going to move with you. God bless you. Amen. 2020's coming. Yes. Let us get prepared. And let's walk with what we know. I can do all things. Take can't. Yeah, I know what the four letter words is like. Yeah, like you don't know. And it got holy in here. <laughs> and buried. Miss Paul Barry. Amen. 
Because you're going to see the glory of God. Amen. Thy servant. 